You're watching Around Town with Henry Dorman. Around Town is sponsored by Chemung Canal Trust Company. They're really nice people. Trust is their middle name. Service is their motto. And I like them a lot, and that's why I bank there. If you ever come by to look me up, I'll be in the vault. Safe place. With all the problems in Washington and Albany, I brought an expert to say hello. This is Assemblyman Phil Palisamo. Yeah. Did I say oh, that right? Palisamo. Palisamo. P A L P A L M. Yep. I always get yeah. I always get concerned with the palm. Uh, now I got it. That's I, I have a question. Every day on television, something's going wrong in Washington, or the White House, or the Senate. Is it just as bad in Albany? Uh, Albany has its moments, but uh, I think one of the things that I'm encouraged by with Albany is uh, we do have our disagreements, disagreements on policy, no question about it. I'm in a chamber where there's uh, uh, 42 Republicans and 108 Democrats, so we're outnumbered. But uh, what I've been encouraged about since I've come in, uh, I established a really good relationship and friendships with some of my colleagues from downstate. Uh, I'm an upstate Republican, they're downstate New York City Democrats, uh, three Latino lawmakers. Uh, and they, we did an exchange a couple times where they came up, brought their families, visited our area, talked to farmers, dairy farmers, uh, potato farmers, uh, talked to business people, community leaders, to see some of the challenges that we're having here and some opportunities. And we did the same thing. We brought some upstate Republicans down to the city to see some of their, their big challenges. I often joke that I grew up in the city of Hornell, I live in the city of Corning, not the big city. Some of the problems they have are, are very unique and, and, and critical. And, and they were able to show us some of the challenges that they, they have in the city. And I think. What's come of that is that we understand that we're all fighting for our areas uh, and we want to understand each other's areas a little bit more. Uh, but when we do have those political disagreements or philosophical disagreements, uh, we do it with respect and courtesy and with an understanding and a knowledge that we're both you know, fighting and advocating for the people we represent. Uh, but we don't want to do it in a way where we're pointing fingers and saying it's all your fault or the other person's fault. Uh, we made some progress. We still got a long ways to go, but I, I'm, I've been encouraged by the, the civility and tone that's kind of taken place in our chamber in Albany. And you have projects that you are very much personally involved with. Right now, what is the most important project that's, that's on your agen there's, agenda? There's a number, but one thing that's kind of been an ongoing uh, personal issue for me is the issue of organ donation. Uh, my sister, the reason it's important to me, my sister was a two-time organ transplant recipient. Uh, once she was donated from uh, the kindness of a stranger, and then in 2006, I had the privilege to donate a kidney to her. Uh, but I didn't realize you she, did. I did, but she was lucky from the perspective of she had access to an organ transplant. Two of them. No. Uh, I didn't realize how bad the numbers were in New York until I was elected in 2010. And when I got up there, uh, one of my colleagues was a two-time uh, kidney transplant recipient, and he was a big advocate. And he, we started talking about the numbers. And in New York, uh, put it this way: the national average for organ donation is a registry is 50 percent. The state of Montana is number one at 87 percent. New York is 51 out of 52. We're only ahead of Puerto Rico at 26 percent. Uh, we have nearly 10,000 New Yorkers right now waiting for a, a, an organ really? transplant. I didn't know that. Uh, 1,800 have been waiting for five years. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the, what I tell people, and I know this is an issue a lot of people don't like to think about because you're really thinking about your own death, um, but I, I try to tell them, you never know when one of your loved ones might be in need of a life-saving organ transplant. You really don't want to be in New York. We've taken some steps to improve the registry and improve the registration numbers, and we've seen that, uh, but we still have a long way to go. And what I what I, I think is encouraging is that one person who or, registers to be an organ donor, at, uh, at the time of their death, they can save up to eight lives and impact up to 50 others. Really? And is that is it one organ? Is it mostly uh, kidneys? Or? Kidneys, heart, lungs, uh, uh, liver. Uh, between all the organs, they can save up to eight lives, and then there's tissue donation and eyes. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of and skin for, for burn victims. So there's a lot that can be done. And, and that's why I was just flabbergasted in a state like New York, uh, which kind of prides itself on being the leader, that we're only ahead of Puerto Rico. Really? Uh, and all those other states are, we're at 26%. We're mm -hmm. The national average is at 50%. And like I said, Montana's at 87%. So we're, we're taking steps, we're making progress, but I think it's an education and a campaign that we need to continue to talk about, uh, making people aware of how to, how to sign up. Uh, you can sign up when you get your license or renew your license. You can sign up uh, when you're registering to vote. Or you can contact, our office can help put you in contact with the organizations through the New York Donate Life. Uh, there's, there's opportunities to do that. Um, but I tell people, listen, you never know when one of your loved ones might need a life-saving organ transplant. Uh, we need to improve the numbers here to, to, to help save lives. And, and we're trying to do that. We've made some changes, some positive changes, I think, hopefully get that direction moving in the right direction. 
you're pretty busy. Yeah, we uh, a lot of traveling around the district. You know, we finished Albany then in June. Now there's a lot of events in the district. Uh, you know, have a chamber meeting uh, to give an overview of the budget earlier this morning. I was reading to some kids up in uh, Seneca County at their summer reading program. So for me, it's important to be out in the community to be seen, to listen more than anything. This is a loaded question. Sure. There are a lot of people when we talk around and do interviews around the area, particularly around your area, that say you should run for governor. <laughs> and you never really answered that, have you? Yeah. Uh, I, I can probably emphatically say that I won't be running for governor. Uh, I like being married. I like seeing my children. <laughs> so uh, that's that's a big undertaking. And I know uh, that season will come up next year, and there's already some uh, individuals who are out there talking about that. So I look forward to being a part of that process and talking to them. Who do you think? Uh, I don't know. I think there's a, a, a several good candidates. And uh, 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 so there's Rob Astorino who ran before, Mark Molinaro, who's a Dutchess County exec, a friend of mine, and Harry Wilson, who ran for comptroller back in 2000. And, a ten. He's expressed some interest on the Republican side, but it's going to be a spirited campaign, I think, uh, uh, and that's a good thing. We need. We, I'm hopeful that uh, people get involved and participate in the process because, uh, you know, we have brave men and women who uh, fight to preserve that right for us. I sense, though, that there is no one with a sense of greatness, no figure there that kind of is above all of the rest, that stands for honor, integrity, and all the things you look for in a new face. You don't want to run. You've got a lot of these qualities, but out there, I don't see anybody that's inspiring. Well, I think that's that's the one thing that I've talked about, even when you saw the presidential campaign. Uh, regardless of who you supported one way or another, uh, there's too much finger pointing, like, say, I'm better, you know, you're bad, I'm, you're worse. Uh, they weren't out there inspiring people to be a part of the process. Whether you, if you want to look at a Democrat like JFK, who said, uh, ask not what your country can do for you, what you can do for your country, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country, or, or Ronald Reagan, who had, had an inscription on his desk that says, uh, it's, there's no limit to where you can go if, if, you, if you don't, uh, or where you can go or what you can accomplish if you don't care who gets the credit. Uh, I, I think our people want our leaders to inspire us, want them to be part of the solution and be part, and, and part of uh, solving the problems in this country, uh, and that's what we need in our leaders, someone who's going to inspire us, and that's what I hope to see more of. And you're looking. I think everyone's looking. Thank you. I wish you luck and thank you for stopping thank by. You. It's always a pleasure to be this, with you. This is our office in the rotunda in Bath. What a nice place to do an interview. Yes. And thank you for coming by. Very nice person. And of all the people I've interviewed in government or politics, he is one of the most, I mean, you can count on him. One of the most everything. I didn't know what adjective to use there. Well, but all of them are good. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. I love my job and I love serving. So. He's up in a year. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. Bye bye. Around Town with Henry Dorman will return in a moment. Yeah, it's going down. down. We're about to live it up, y'all. Let's go. It's a big world, and now we're loving this town. It's our turn. So put your hands up, we on the big screen. And everybody's here living out our dreams, dreams, oh, yeah, yeah. Don't be scared, take a chance, come on, give me a hand. It's time to laugh, time to smile, now let's get up and dance. Come on, everybody, let's live it up. Let it out if you can't get it up. This right here gonna make you jump, jump, jump. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. I'll be honest, your resume is not what I'm used to. I know. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need a 
need a hard worker. Good. I've got two part-time jobs and to help my parents pay the bills. I need problem solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find, cultivate, and train a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Life, it never stops moving. Getting from here to there. Managing long hours at work. Juggling a busy home. You need a bank that keeps up. That's Shimon Canal Trust Company. Bank online. Bank with our mobile app. Deposit a check with your smartphone. Open an account at Shimon Canal and bank with us anywhere, anytime. Shimon Canal Trust Company. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. We now return to Around Town with Henry Dorn. We are sitting out under the sun in a beautiful place that will rent you a horse to ride, will take care of your horse, and does an awful lot of other very good things. And this is Erica, who owns the place. And this is vast, and it's just up the road from Watkins Glen. Yeah, just a five minute drive from Watkins Glen, up the but, hill. But tell me, your last name is Scandinavian. Isn't yeah, Ekstrom. Ekstrom. Yeah. Swedish. Swedish. My father is Swedish and my mother is Polish. So. My parents are Norwegian, so we're going to talk. <laughs> we're going to talk Scandinavian together. <laughs> but you you developed here a tremendously big, wonderful place filled with the most beautiful horses. Oh, thank you. Now tell me, how did you do all of this, and what should people know? Are you open? Do people come here to ride? To place their horses to be yeah, taken so, care of. So to and, start, and, we try to do pretty much everything. Um, my goal is to be kind of a horse fairy godmother, um, bringing pretty much anything that you could think of to people. Um, so we do a lot of guided trail rides. Um, that's probably our main business is the guided rides. On your own tra trails. So we take we have our own trails as long as um, as well as some fantastic neighbors who allow us to ride on their property. We also have an outfitter's permit with the Finger Lakes National Forest. So for the longer rides, we can go up into the National Forest property as well, oh. which is quite lovely. I didn't know there was one here. Yeah, it's just up on the hill. I grew up about an hour from here, and I didn't even know this forest was mm. here. Um, I discovered it later in life, which I think is kind of sad that we, as locals, don't know that there's a National sure. Forest. But my goal has been to try to get people to explore that National Forest in a different way, because Obviously, you can hike at the forest, but being able to go on horseback, you can cover a little bit more ground and see more of the, the national forest, and it's the only national forest in New York State. So seeing it from horseback is, I think, a really nice way to do it. If people want to go horseback riding, is it by the hour? How much does it cost? So How much does it do, cost to board? Yeah, so for, uh, for tra our trail rides, um, you know, everything is booked ahead of time. Unlike a lot of riding facilities where you just show up and get on a horse, we don't want just to take you horseback riding. We want to give you the opportunity for the right ride for you. So, you know, we need to know a bit about you so we can give you the right horse, not just a horse. And we want to know what you're looking for so we can get you on the right ride, not just a random trail. So we can take people who have never seen a horse before in their life, um, put them up on horses and take them out into the wilderness for a lovely um, but user-friendly trail ride that's still not boring. Um, and then we have much more advanced trails with obstacles and riverbanks and big fields to gallop through. That's for me. Huh? Yeah, perfect. You'll be, you'll fit right in. <laughs> um, but you know, it's great is that we can cater the ride to the person. And that's one of the reason we book everything ahead of time is so that we know exactly what you want and we give you the experience mm -hmm. you want. Because, because I just don't want people to pay me to be miserable. Yeah. I want them to get what they want. Um, and the trail rides, um, they start at one hour, and the one hour ride is $55. Um, and then they get a little cheaper as they get longer, just because the hardest work is getting the horse ready and prepared, not the actual ride itself. The ride itself really? is fun. So the one hour ride is uh, $55 for anyone beginner up to advanced riders. Um, we also have an hour and a half ride that's $80 per person. Um, and that ride focuses a lot on obstacles and getting people to really push their boundaries a little. And then as they get um, longer, the two hour ride and up is when we start to go to the National Forest. And we prefer that people be a little more advanced riders for those rides. Um, just because we do have to go a little on the road and we have some 
really long open stretches of field that are much more fun if you're if you're moving mm -hmm. but can turn into a little bit of a smorgasbord if we're not <laughs> so we we'd prefer people have the rain control to stop horses from eating um you know because the grass is literally you know waist high so mm, really yeah so what's nice is that we're going on trails not open mm -hmm. roads is the price about the same uh, the price for the uh, two-hour ride is um, is 150. So it all averages, or sorry, 100, and three-hour ride is 150. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it averages about 50 dollars an hour. And you board horses too. We do. We have a couple horses that are owned by other people that they keep their horses here, and we take care of them. We don't have a lot of space for that right now, just because we've been pretty popular. And I also have a problem of owning a lot of horses myself. Um, right now, we personally own 37 horses. Wow. Of them, uh, two of them are retired, um, and they're just living out their lives happily. They've served uh, people for you know almost their entire life, and they mm -hmm. deserve it. Um, we have one stallion who obviously yeah, we're not What putting, a nice thing to say. Yeah, they, they really do. We actually have a retirement program for our horses. So if people are looking to take in a retired horse, you know, they usually have a bit of arthritis, um, you know, might have a bit of sore joints and stuff, and they're not really able to do the workload anymore, but they're still perfectly capable of being a loving addition to a family. Um, and, you know, maybe taking the kids out for a little putts on the trail. So we actually last year retired three horses mm -hmm. and they went to some really wonderful families who have, they've kept in touch with us and they send pictures once mm -hmm. in a while. It's really lovely. I have to ask you this mm -hmm. because we're sitting here in the shade on the wonderful table, but underneath the table. Oh, is Seneca. It, is that Seneca? Know, this is my dog, Seneca. She's a little shy, She's so she may not come out to say hi. Her favorite thing to do is to be my car alarm. She lets me know whenever a car pulls in the driveway. Um, and then she sometimes goes on the trail rides, but she found out that if she's on the trail, she can't bark at the cars. <laughs> so, you know, we have a, we have a, a dilemma here. But Does she just take it that easy all the time? Yeah, she pretty much has the world's greatest life. Uh, when I die, I would like to come back as Seneca. Um, basically, we wake up in the morning, we go outside, we both go to work. I work with people and the horses. Seneca just does what she wants. Um, and then at <laughs> night, we come back inside, we eat dinner, and we fall asleep. She basically has the best life, and mm -hmm. she, she gets free run of the whole farm. Now, if people need to have information, what's the website, the telephone number, do sure. they call you? So the best, the best way to get information is obviously our website. So our website is uh, www.paintedbarstables.com. That's P-A-I-N-T-E-D-B-A-R. S T A B L E S dot com. Um, there's a lot of information there for everything from trail rides to our lesson program as well. We have a thriving lesson program for local people who want to ride every week and become better riders and really develop their skill sets. Um, so there's that, that information as well. Um, on, and then the other way to get in touch with us is best is email. Phone can be hard because you actually caught me not on a horse, but usually I'm on a horse or with people. So it's hard for me to answer the phone. So email tends to be better. And our email address is ride at paintedbarstables.com, which is pretty easy to remember. Yes, so. it is. Um, but we definitely love it when people get in touch with us and come riding. Uh, we take a lot of people, about 3,000 riders a year. So 3,000 3, a year? 3,000 trail riders wow. a year. And you seem so happy to see everybody. Yeah, no, the, we've met some amazing people this way. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've met some of my best friends that c have come and, and, you know, for riding, and that's how I met them. Could I ride like this? You could ride like this. Could I really? I think you could. I have a, I have a cowboy hat I could wear. You could, you could ride. I believe it. <laughs> well, we're going to say goodbye to you because now I have a new date, a horse. We're, right? We're going yeah. go, to stroll off into the sunrise <laughs> on a horse. Yeah, you, should, you could ride Pepsi any day. Thank you. Pepsi. Pepsi. That's the name of which horse? That's the best horse. The best horse. The best horse. Dorman's going on Pepsi. <laughs> See you soon. Around Town with Henry Dorman will return in a moment. Okay. 
People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today, I'm just an aluminum can, but one day, I could be a stadium. Really? Buzz, what's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just, I, there was a, I had, just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point there, smoke. Key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Life, it never stops moving. Getting from here to there. Managing long hours at work. Juggling a busy home. You need a bank that keeps up. That's Shimon Canal Trust Company. Bank online. Bank with our mobile app. Deposit a check with your smartphone. Open an account at Shimon Canal and bank with us anywhere, anytime. Shimon Canal Trust Company, member FDIC, equal housing lender. We now return to Around Town with Henry Dorman. I want to introduce you to Jeff Scott from Alabama, who is a stand-up and a sit-down comedian. That's right. And you do private parties, and you're funny all the time. I try to be. Now, it must be to me, when I see some of your colleagues performing, really hard when people don't laugh. And, and do, how, do you, how do you make, I mean, this is a dumb question, but how do you make people laugh? I'd you, love to learn so I can be a star like you. Well, I think you have to use your, um, your personal experience uh, and draw on things that have actually happened in real life. I mean, it's always great to make stuff up that's mm -hmm. funny. But the funniest stuff seems to come from actual things that happened in your life that you can take and then extrapolate from and, and build something funny. The, the, when they don't laugh, that's the loudest, that, that's the, that's the loudest sound in the world is the mm. silence. So. Mm. How, do you, how do you turn on the funny? Um, I, I think it's knowing your audience, knowing your demographic, you know, knowing who you're Make me laugh, <laughs> make me laugh. That must oh. be a horrible thing to hear. Well, actually, that's the hardest question because a lot of people will say, make me laugh. And at that particular moment, you may not be, you know, you may not be ready because a lot of these things are put together in, you know, one, two, three minute bits uh, rather than just one liners. You know, they're not really a lot of uh, one liner, strictly one liner comics that can just roll off one liner. There was only one, Henny Youngman. He, he was one of them, yeah. There, there's, a few, there's a few that's been out in the last few years, and when they're good at it, they're awesome. But most people, most people do, you know, 30-second, minute, minute-and-a-half bits. Do you have that? Uh, I actually, I actually do? do that. I'm much more of a bit storytelling style of comic, mm -hmm. especially being from the South originally. Can you tell me one? Uh, sure. I went to, um, I, I've, I've noticed that, you know, the, the San Francisco airport um, decided to put therapy pigs on their concourses. Therapy pigs? Therapy pigs. Now see, I've never heard of a therapy pig. I've heard of a therapy dog, a therapy cat, and even a therapy ferret. But I've never heard of a therapy pig. And I, I you know, I love bacon, but I've never had a flight that was so bad that I got off the flight thinking, oh man, that was a horrible flight. Somebody give me a pig to scratch. You know, and you got to feel really sorry for the guy that, that um, takes care of these pigs because, you know, there are a lot of cool jobs at the airport. You know, you got the, you know, the little short lady that gets to see everybody naked in the x-ray machine and you got the tall skinny dude that, um, you know, uses the orange things and, and parks the planes and then you've got the shepherd and his job is to herd therapy pigs. <laughs> so that actually it, it might not be such a bad idea because it it winds up being one of the best you know anti-terrorist deterrents ever you know because <laughs> you know most people that's going to blow up a pair airport aren't going to do it where there's a pig around so <laughs> so things like that it's usually you know and that was about a minute and it's I can actually expand it up to two minutes I can shrink it down to mm -hmm. 45 seconds depending on what it, and I put that in with several other bits you must have a very facile brain 
A very what? Tassel brain just to go um, like that. I get that from my dad. My dad, my aunts, and my uncles were some of the sharpest wits ever. And it, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas was always, you know, when you when you would sit around and these one liners would come off and you just you have to learn to keep up. It it's you know, I've I've I left grad school many, many years ago and I've done many different things over the years, but you know, intellectually stand up is the hardest thing I've ever tried to do. So are you expensive if people want to hire uh, you? No, actually I, I don't think I'm expensive. I think I work cheap. But you know, most comics would. There's always there's always that, you know, I'd like a little more, but I think it, de it depends on the event. You know, I've, I've done birthday parties, I've done anniversary parties. I, I did an anniversary party not too long ago in Niagara Falls, Canada, and it was for, um, it was the 50th anniversary of an Indian couple. It was at a Hindu temple in front of an all Indian crowd. And, you know, they booked me and I went in and did it. and. You know, so it's not expensive. It depends on the time of day. It depends on whether it's a Friday night or a Saturday night. Or how was that? How was that? Oh, it went great. Uh, yeah. it, it it went great, and it's nice to know that your material will cross cultures. And they they accepted it as uh, as Indian, just as funny as, as English. Oh, sure, sure. Now the gentleman who who booked me, he he gave me some material and some or some ideas mm -hmm. uh, three weeks in advance, and I had probably. Out of the 40 minutes, I worked about 10 minutes of custom material in that he wanted, you know, to make sure I hit some certain yeah. themes that would that would play well with that audience. So you customize it for each audience. Sure, sure. I, I usually will, you know, call them and ask them, well, is there anything you want to stay away from? Is there anything you want to make sure to add? Is there anything you want? Do you want me to semi roast your guest of honor? Do you want me to stay away from that? Mm -hmm. And and usually they'll give me enough for five to seven minutes out of a half an hour to 45 minutes, and I usually put that at the front. Yeah. And that usually gets them warmed up and broke in. Where did they contact you? I'm how sorry? Did, how did they reach you? Um, I'm through you know, various booking sites like Thumbtack and Gig Salad uh, is the normal way. And then of course I have my own, my own email. Yeah, uh, what's the email and phone number? My email is uh, jeffscottcomedy at gmail.com. And the phone number is 603-591-5127. Do you lay awake at night thinking up these things? Uh, actually, no. I, I tend to, I, I'm on the road a lot, driving around for various things, and I either record them on my voice recorder or I write them down in a notebook mm -hmm. and, and flesh them out over time. Do you find that being from Alabama makes it easier to use the accent? Uh, it, it actually does help, especially in this part of the country. I always start, in, at least in this part of the country, in, in the upstate, uh, I always start my audience that it's always great to perform for people who think that Binghamton's in the deep south. <laughs> so, and that usually gets some, that usually, but the accent does help. A lot of people have, have actually thought that, that it was a, a put on, and they're surprised when they talk to me after that I really do talk like this. And so I decided even to put, yes, I really do talk like this on my business card, so. Really? Yeah. You remind me of that, uh, that uh, comedian who played Gomer Pyle. Oh. <laughs> what was his oh, name? Oh, Jim Neighbors. Jim Neighbors. Jim Golly. Neighbors. Golly. Golly. Yeah, well, I actually, I actually grew up in a town very similar to Mayberry. It was, it was a lot like that, and I know a lot of people like that. Give him a ring. Thank you very, very Thank much. Thank you. Thanks Thank you for very coming much. by. Funny guy. I'm going to learn from him. I hope. You're watching WENY.